This video focuses on another one of the tools in our bioanalytical chemistry toolkit for studying the structures of biologically relevant molecules. So in this video, we talk about IR or infrared spectroscopy. Now, this is a topic that was also covered in the organic chemistry class. And so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. This is intended as a review and brush up of infrared spectroscopy and what it can do for you in terms of solving the structures of organic molecules. So when we talk about IR spectroscopy, much like some of the other techniques, we are talking about the absorption of electromagnetic radiation in a very specific region, specifically the IR region. So when we are looking at an IR spectrum, generally what we are measuring and recording here to create our spectrum is we are recording the x-axis as the wave number. The wave number is the inverse of the wavelength. So wave number is equal to 1 over the wavelength. And specifically, the units here that we generally use for our wave number in the IR region is inverse centimeters. So 1 over the wavelength here, since the wavelength is in centimeters, gives us centimeters to the negative one value. And then on the y-axis, generally what is plotted is the percent transmittance, the percent of IR radiation that is transmitted through that particular sample. And then what results here when we measure the IR spectrum for a particular molecule is we get a series of signals that look something like this. And within this IR region, generally when doing IR spectroscopy of an organic molecule, if we fill in some values on the axes here, our y-axis, given that it's in percentage, we would go from 0 to 100. And the x-axis, generally what we're measuring is between 4,000 inverse centimeters and about 500 inverse centimeters as that IR region of interest. Now, to draw to your attention some specific parts of the IR spectrum, the region between 500 and approximately 1,000 is referred to as the fingerprint region. The reason we refer to it as the fingerprint region is because this is the region where you can compare much like you would a fingerprint from one person to another to determine if the fingerprint is from the same person or a different person. You can compare two samples of molecules to determine whether they contain the same compound or not. If the two have the same fingerprint, that is strong evidence that the two compounds are identical. And so IR can be a very useful tool if you have a standard sample and then you have an unknown and you want to know if your unknown is the same compound as your standard. To enable that, look at the fingerprint region because the other portion of the region we refer to as the functional group region and the functional group region is going to be specifically useful as the name functional group region implies. It's going to be particularly useful for determining what types of functional groups are in an unknown molecule to help in the identification process because we'll see that specific functional groups will show absorption at specific regions that are empirically predictable here. And so Thinking about what regions of the spectrum particular functional groups will absorb in to help us in identifying some structural features of those molecules, we can take a look at a chart of well-known values for the expected range in which different functional groups occur within the IR spectrum. So if we take a look at this chart in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, we see some IR absorptions for common functional groups. And your functional group is listed here in the left column. 
Middle column is the absorption location. Notice the units there are inverse centimeters. And then we also have some hints here about what to expect in terms of the absorption intensity. A few of these functional groups stick out and are very, very prominent. For example, the alcohol functional group is recognized as a very broad signal. Generally, the alcohol group, if you see a signal between 3,400 and 3,700 inverse centimeters, and it's the broadest signal in the entire spectrum, you can count on that being an alcohol group. In fact, um, one way to describe the way the alcohol group looks is rather than saying it's broad, it can be described as being tongue-like in shape, much like your tongue sticks down like that. And maybe I'll even color that in red to make it even more tongue-like there. If you're sticking your tongue out, it sticks down like so as something that has a very wide, broad base to it. And so that's what you're going to be looking for when you're looking for an alcohol group. Keep in mind that other groups, specifically alkanes, can show up kind of close in region. They show up almost at 3,000. Alcohols are a little bit further um, at larger inverse centimeter values. Alkene groups also show up kind of in that same sort of region, but they're not going to appear as that tongue-like shape. So that's what you have to look for to identify an alcohol functional group within your molecule. Likewise, another very prominent signal that occurs in IR spectrum is the signal for carbonyl groups that are in a variety of different functional groups. So down here at the bottom, we have our carbonyl containing compounds all of which, due to the fact that they have that carbonyl group, are going to give a specific IR signal that is very strong. And when we say strong, that means that it's going to be the strongest or nearly the strongest signal in the entire spectrum. It's going to reach almost all the way down to the baseline. It's going to reach lower than practically any other signal in the spectrum. And if you want to further narrow down what type of functional group that carbonyl is a part of, you can deduce that by looking here at the absorption range. So with this chart, which you will have access to on the quiz and is included in the packet of reference materials for this particular module, we should be able to pick out some of the functional groups that are in particular example IR spectra. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So what we see here in the lower right, this spectrum, by the way, is included in your packet of materials for this unit. We see the IR spectrum of propen 1 all or 1 propanol. And some key features that we can highlight in this spectrum is going back to the alcohol group looking like a tongue. Here is the tongue that I'm outlining in red right there, that is your alcohol functional group there. And notice how it is relatively close to this prominent signal that you don't want to mistake for a tongue. Notice how this is narrower, it's jagged at the bottom, it's not smooth like a tongue. And so that signal instead represents your alkane group. Going back to the chart up here, the alkane group you see between 2850 and 2975, so that's what you're seeing right here. Alcohol, on the other hand, is in that 3400 to 3700 region. In this case, the middle of that, this, the lowest point of that is about 3400. Um, then we look at the rest of the spectrum here, and the portion that is around 1000 down to 500, this would be the fingerprint region. So while this is not generally useful for picking out specific functional groups if you're identifying an unknown, instead, if you had another sample of one propanol laying around and you wanted to determine whether this unknown also contained one propanol, you could take the IR spectrum and compare the fingerprint regions between the two. So the fingerprint is very specific to each individual specific compound rather than illustrating a particular functional group. And within the one propanol, we don't see anything to speak of in our carbonyl region here around 1700 because there are no carbonyl groups within that molecule.
So let's go ahead now and take a look at another example problem to illustrate um, the additional types of functional groups that we can see. So what I've pulled in here is another example of an IR spectrum taken from your handout for this module. And in this particular example, we can take a look at the spectrum and I've highlighted here the fingerprint region, which again, if we had a standard of this compound, we can compare the standard to this fingerprint region to determine whether our unknown compound had the same exact structure as the known standard. The other region here is our fun functional group region, which is the more important region if we are trying to identify an unknown molecule from scratch here. And I want to draw your attention to a couple of things in this. One is that we have a carbonyl functional group, showing up right here, I've put a green star on that signal. And that functional group, if we measure out where it's from, I know the print is a little bit small here, but we have 1500 as our signal there, 2000 right here. So as we look at it and measure out 1600, 1700, we're looking at this at being somewhere in the low 1700 region. And so I would deduce that we can narrow down the functional groups that are present here to aldehyde is 1720 to 1740, that's a pretty good fit. Ketone around 1715, again, pretty good fit. Um, the ester, that one is getting a little too far into the larger um, wave number range, 1735 to 1750. And then the carboxylic acid, 1700 to 1725 is another possibility. So we could narrow that down based on seeing this signal, which is Keep in mind, a very strong signal, meaning it is almost the strongest, if not the strongest, meaning reaching the lowest here in the spectrum, signal of all of them is a carbonyl containing group of some sort. And we can narrow that down likely to aldehyde, ketone, or acid based on the exact location of it. Then we come onward, going left in our spectrum here. And keep in mind that the signals we're seeing right here at around 3,000, are your CH signals. They are not going to be alcohols because it is not a broad tongue-like shape. So don't mistake this for an alcohol. Instead, those are um, CH groups of alkanes or could be carbon-carbon double bonds and hydrogens of uh, alkene group. And then we come even further to the left here, and you might be tempted to think this is an alcohol group that I'm circling with my laser pointer right now, but that is definitely not an alcohol either because it is not tongue-shaped. It has that point at the bottom, which would indicate to us that um, perhaps it could be an amine is one possibility there because the amine groups are 3300 to 3350 but definitely not an alcohol. So we can rule out an alcohol functional group. And so one take home from this is that with IR, sometimes one of the values of it is just ruling out certain functional groups. Like if you know that you have an oxygen in your molecule and you're trying to determine whether the oxygen is part of an ether functional group or part of an alcohol functional group, if you don't see an alcohol group, you can say, okay, there's no alcohol. So that's suggesting to me that maybe this is part of an ether functional group instead. So IR is a very useful tool by determining the wavelength range at which these bonds stretch, bend, and vibrate. We can deduce some specific features regarding the functional groups of the molecule. Or if we have a standard, we can compare whether our unknown compound is the same as the standard by looking at that fingerprint region.